The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke this parable to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went and he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more money, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, these last worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I also want to welcome this morning the St. John the Baptist School Choir who are leading us and joining us in song. And so we welcome them and we're glad to have them here as we begin a new school year and a new journey together. Jesus Christ is extraordinarily generous. Jesus Christ is extraordinarily generous. Amen? Ooh, this is going to be a real work. Anyways. What makes the saints so remarkable is their brilliant reflection of God's extraordinary generosity. Like the landowner in the parable, like our Lord himself, they give without counting the cost. Like the sun, they tirelessly shine forth God's goodness, both in their words and in their actions. 
because they are constantly filled with that same goodness. Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta is a powerful and eloquent example of this point. Saint Mother Teresa, she would visit the many convents that she had founded. Even though she was the superior general of the religious order, the missionaries of charity, she had a habit of getting up early on the last day of her visit. Now this meant, early meant she got up about four o'clock in the morning. And washing the convent's bathrooms before the other sisters woke up. Father Sebastian Bahakala, who is a priest connected to the Missionaries of Charity, explains how he learned Christian generosity from Mother Teresa. One day, while he was working at the Home for the Dying in Calcutta, the corporation ambulance brought in a man. I looked at him and recognized him straight away, as he had been to our homes several times. So I told Mother Teresa that there was no sense in taking him in again as he would probably go out when he felt, when he was feeling better, and he would take advantage of the generosity of the sisters. Mother Teresa looked at him and said, Brother Sebastian, does this man need your help now or not? And it doesn't matter whether he was here yesterday or not, or will return tomorrow. We do not have yesterday anymore, nor do we have tomorrow yet. All that we have is today, to love God and serve the poor. That's just a little glimpse of that kind of supernatural generosity that continually overflows from the heart of God for each and every one of us. Amen? Well, we're getting better. Jesus himself is the generous landowner in that parable that we heard from Matthew. And the lesson that Jesus wants us to receive and to learn is that his generosity goes beyond our greatest understanding. It's beyond our comprehension. This is why in that first reading we hear those words when God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways. To pay these hired workers a full day's wage for only a few hours of work is the epitome of generosity. There is no other reason for it. He does it simply because he is generous, deeply concerned about these men, and the landowner was capable of helping them. In Palestine, the day laborers at that time of Jesus had no steady work or income. 
These workers were hired on a day-to-day -day basis. The workers still waiting to be given work late in the day were probably reassigned and, re and realized that they were gonna have another hungry evening for themselves and their family since they had no work. Only an individual with truly a truly generous heart would take the trouble to put them to work with only an hour remaining till sundown. And only an extraordinarily generous person would pay them the full day's wage. For us, that is Jesus Christ. Amen? Now, Jesus Christ, as I said, is extraordinarily generous to us. And the history of salvation is the story of his limitless and boundless giving. When we look at our God, first, God gives us life. Then after original sin, he gives hope for salvation. Then, with Jesus becoming the Word made flesh, the Son of God, he gives redemption. And finally, to those who faithfully work in God's vineyard, he gives everlasting heavenly bliss. And God doesn't stop there. Strictly speaking, and I include myself, we deserve none of these gifts. And yet, just as that landowner gave the laborers real work to do in his vineyard, even if the reward far outweighed the work. Jesus, too, allows us to make a real contribution to the eternal happiness of ourselves and others through prayer, self-sacrifice, and service. When we look at Jesus, when we think about him, think of a volcano just completely exploding with generous love, flowing out to us constantly, eternally. It doesn't end. It doesn't stop. So how do we take doing the real work for God's kingdom and vineyard? God's generosity truly is beyond our understanding, beyond our comprehension. And yet it's one of its most remarkable manifestations is often overlooked. The landowner in that parable gave those workers real work, not just some make-believe stuff but real work to do in his vineyard. And again, even if the reward far outweighed the um, actual amount of work, Jesus does the same thing with us, with each one of us. Jesus allows us to make a truly substantial and genuine contribution to the eternal happiness of ourselves and others, to our neighbors, through loving him, through serving others, and building up the church, the body of Christ. 
This is one of the most significant differences between Christianity and other religions. In e the Eastern religions, for example, where they believe in reincarnation, human actions on earth have no lasting effect. If someone acts rightly, they will dissolve out of existence and be absorbed into nothingness after death, escaping existence and suffering. Yet those who act wrongly, according to reincarnationism, are recycled into some other form of existence. And the recycling continues until they finally get it right and then they are dissolved into nirvana. This false doctrine drains human activity of any real and lasting meaning. Yet in Jesus, our actions do have meaning and impact. Amen? Because we are members of his mystical body. We are Jesus' hands, his feet, his eyes, his mouth. When we serve those around us, in a very real way, we are serving Jesus himself. And we are storing an eternal treasure in heaven. When we stay faithful to our Christian principles and values, even under pressure, humiliation, or even persecution, we glorify God and add to our heavenly reward. When we help others to draw closer to the person of Jesus, through our words, our prayers, and most especially our example, we increase the everlasting joys of heaven for them and for us. This is the privilege Jesus has generously given us by making us fellow co-workers in God's vineyard, in the kingdom of God. Today, let's think about that. Think about the reward that we have been given. Think about the reward we will be given. Let's thank him for it. But also let's promise Jesus that this week we will do our best to live up to it. One of the ways that we can do that, you'll notice in your pew that there is a little card here. Stewardship, the way of life. There are a number of ministries on this card. They are the ministries that go on in this parish and in our family of parishes. This is how we can work with Jesus in the vineyard. This is how we can make a difference. And Jesus will reward us. He will bless us beyond, as I say, what we could ever imagine. But we need to respond used to be said when I was growing up that many hands make like work. Together, we can make a difference. We can build up God's vineyard. There's also some pages there entitled Stewardship, a Way of Life. I invite you, take it, pray about it, ask the Holy Spirit for guidance. And then if you can, and you will, if you can and will do so, fill this out, 
get it back to us so that we can put you in touch with these various ministries and have you help all of us to build up this community, our community of St. Simon and St. Jude, a great community with great enthusiasm, a welcoming parish that has amazing, amazing gifts with amazing people. I've seen that in the short time I've been living here, but also I've known that since coming to St. Simon and St. Jude. So I leave that with you. Pray about it, think about it. If I can help you with answering any of the questions or any concerns or whatever, I'll be happy to help. But I believe in all of my heart, God can do amazing things with each one of us, whether you think you have gifts or not. Like, I'll give you one example. If you were singing, say, in the choir, people will say to me, Father, I sound awful. I have no voice. I go, really? You're talking now. But the thing is, when you sing, yeah, you might not sound like Pavarotti or Josh Groban, or you may not sound like... Um, Celine Dion or Ariana Grande or whoever. But know this, when that voice gets to that heavenly throne, you do sound like, your, your voice resounds like Pavarotti or like Celine Dion. You make a joyful sound unto the Lord. So use your gifts, whether it's singing, whether it's working in some of these ministries, use your gift because it will make a difference and God will be glorified and so pleased. Amen?